What's up everybody, how's it going? A lot of people have been messaging me lately telling me that there's a lot of content out there on how to get jobs at big tech companies and startups, but there isn't that much content on how to perform well on the job once you're there. So in this video, I'm gonna be telling you how I ranked in the top 5% of software engineers at Google, and I'll be giving you more context on that in just a second. And I'm gonna share with you seven tips, techniques that I used to get this kind of performance and that you can use in your current or future job to perform very well. So for context, if you go to Google and you Google Google Performance System, I wonder how many times I'm gonna say Google in this video. I wonder how many times I've said Google across all the videos on my entire channel. <sighs> you will find a bunch of links, and this is publicly available information. And there's this one link, this case study here, how Google does performance management, that basically explains the entire performance process at Google. This document dates back to 2016, so parts of it might be outdated, but if you scroll down to page seven, you'll see the section on calibration, and this part looks like it's the same now as it was then. Basically, every six months, every employee at Google, including software engineers, goes through what's called the performance review process. They go through a self-assessment, they get peer reviews, manager reviews, and eventually they get a calibration rating. This is basically like a grade that says how well you did over the past six months or less. So there are five ratings, needs improvement, meets expectations, exceeds expectations, strongly exceeds expectations, and superb. As you might expect, the distribution of these ratings pretty closely follows a normal distribution or a bell curve. It's a little skewed to the left, meaning the grand majority of Googlers get either meets expectations or exceeds expectations. Then there's a sharp drop-off at strongly exceeds, and then finally there's an even sharper drop-off at superb. There are internal statistics that tell you what percentage of Googlers get each calibration rating at every performance cycle. It's typically under 5% of Googlers for the superb rating, but it does vary from organization to organization or product area. For instance, YouTube might be different than technical infrastructure. Technical infrastructure was the org or organization that I was under, and I think for that it was almost always roughly 4% of Google software engineers who got superb. So if we look at my performance, I joined Google on May 1st. 2017. Then about four months after that, I got my first performance cycle and I got exceeds expectations. Then six months after that, I got strongly exceeds expectations. Six months after that, I got superb. That's also when I was promoted from L3, the entry level at Google, to L4. And then six months after that, during my first cycle as an L4 engineer, I got strongly exceeds expectations. And then after that, I became an ex-Google software engineer. So what are the things that I did to get this type of performance. By the way, we've got a very special sponsor for today's video. It's going to be my company, Algo Expert. If you're preparing for your coding interviews, check out algoexpert.io. Use the promo code CLEM, C -L -E -M, for a discount on the platform. We're going to go through seven tips and techniques. Disclaimer, you do not have to do all the things that I'm about to mention. These are merely the things that worked for me and that I would recommend, but you do not have to do them if you don't want to. There are no sort of carved in stone rules that say that you have to do these seven things to perform very well. So the first thing that I would recommend is that you put in a lot of work. Do not put in just the minimum amount of time that you need to get stuff done. Go the extra mile, put the extra work hours in. Why you should do this is very simple. First of all, there are many things that you can't control in life. You can't control how tall you are. You can't control how smart you are. What you can control, however, is how much effort and how much work you put into something. Secondly, it's as simple as the more work you put in, the more reward you will get out. This is something that I firmly believe, and if you don't believe me, maybe you'll believe our good friend Elon Musk. And then just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. If other people are putting in 40 hour work weeks and you're putting in 100 hour work weeks, then you will achieve in four months what it takes them a year to achieve. 
Perhaps this is especially relevant when you're running your own business, like for instance us on Algo Expert, but I do think that it's also very relevant when you're just working at a company. At the end of the day, you're competing against yourself. If you put in twice as much work as you're currently putting in, you're going to get twice as much out. The second thing that I would recommend is for you to be extremely self-aware of what your strengths are. Find the things that you're really good at and triple down on them. Find ways to exercise those skills, those things that you're good at, and to really shine, excel in them, and take advantage of them. As an example, I'd like to think that I'm very good at the soft skills of software engineering. For instance, I'm good at getting people together from a lot of different functions or a lot of different teams, at disambiguating projects, at getting people to align on things, to execute on ideas. And so for my first day at Google, I found ways to get myself in positions where I could do all these things. I would go to all of our cross-functional or cross-team meetings and I would represent the front end, which was the part of the team that I was on. I found ways to exercise all of these strengths that I had to really take advantage of them come performance. Another example, I think that I'm pretty good at management. So I told myself that I would do whatever I needed to do to get as much management experience or the closest thing to it as I could. So I ended up hosting three interns and one engineering resident during my two years at Google. And the important thing to note here is that this isn't really something that most entry-level engineers do, because typically you kind of think, oh, you have to have a few years of experience before you manage interns or especially an engineering resident. But I told myself, no, this is something that I think I'm good at. I'm going to triple down on it and do it. And I'm really happy to say that it went really well. All three of my interns got return offers either for other internships at Google or for a full-time offer at Google. My latest one told me that he just got a return offer for a full-time position. My engineering resident converted into a full-time position. And so the point is that really played to my advantage. I was able to really flex those strengths that I had. My third tip is that you should have a very close relationship with your manager. Now, I'm not saying that you need to be buddies or friends with your manager. What I am saying is that your manager should be intimately familiar with your work, your accomplishments, your goals, your concerns. They should know all of these things inside and out. If they don't know these things, you need to get them to know these things. If they don't have enough face time with you or you feel like they don't give you enough attention, try to find a way to get more one-on-ones with them to get them to know you better. Make them work for the half a million compensation packages that they're getting. At the end of the day, at a company like Google or any other big tech company, your manager is the single most important person who can make or break you when it comes to performance. If you have that good relationship with your manager, if they know all of these things about you, about your work, your accomplishments, and so on and so forth, you will do well. You will be set up for success. If they don't know these things, you will have a hard time and it'll be really frustrating because it'll sort of be out of your control. It'll be because of somebody else, but perhaps you could have done a better job to get your relationship with them to be better. It's really their job at the end of the day, but sometimes you have to push a little bit. The fourth thing that you're really going to want to do, this one especially carries a lot of weight at big tech companies like Google, is to make sure that you smash the like button on this video and all my other videos. This is something that everyone's going to check, and if you don't have that, it's really going to lower your chances of getting a high performance rating. The actual fourth tip has to do with visibility. It's very important that other people, including your manager, this ties into the previous point, have visibility in your work and in your accomplishments. For example, if you're the person who fixes a really bad bug that nobody else wanted to touch, make sure that other people are aware that you fixed that bug and that you get the recognition that you deserve. Perhaps this means sending an email and making sure that people hear this or mentioning it at a meeting. Point is, you want people to know about your work and to value the stuff that you've done. As a general rule of thumb, I think it's good to have at least three people who can vouch for your abilities, whether these people be on sibling teams, whether they be your closest coworkers. Have three people with whom you have good relationships who know what it is that you do, who value your work, and who can speak to your abilities because this is going to pay off in spades when you get to that performance cycle. My fifth recommendation is going to be similar to my second one, and it's going to be for you to be very self-aware of the things that you're weak at and not to let them become your kryptonite. You do not want to be pulled down by your weakest link. 
As an example, for me, coming out of a coding boot camp, I had only been coding for six months before I started my job at Google, and the thing that was kind of my weakness was my coding ability. I was not the best coder. And so during my first eight months or so, my manager would often tell me that as far as impact and leadership, I was sort of off the charts for an L3 engineer. But as far as technical complexity of the work that I was doing, I could use a little bit of work. And so I really made sure not to forget about that, not to forget about my main function as a software engineer, which is to code. And I really doubled down on that to become a better coder, a better software engineer, whatever you want to call it. I was really lucky that I had a great team and great peers who really helped me. There's no better place than Google to become a better software engineer and to write better code. But that's something that I really focused on. Any complex project from a technical point of view that showed up, I would try to grab to be able to flex my technical abilities. And I made sure not to let that pull me down. For a lot of software engineers, their weakness is going to be the soft skills of software engineering, and that's the stuff that they're going to have to work on. Tip number six is that you need to remember that these performance ratings and how to get them is not going to be handed to you on a silver platter. Big tech companies like Google operate very much like meritocracies. They will reward you based on performance, so these calibration ratings are super important. They're going to determine how fast you get promoted, how big of a bonus you get, the size of your stock awards that you get every year, but no one is going to come to you and tell you, here's how you get this performance rating. They might give you tips here and there, but you're going to have to create your own opportunities. No one came to me and told me, Clement, you should host three interns and a software engineering resident. I had to seek those things out. This is super important, and to be honest, it kind of goes hand in hand with also making sure that you want these things, make sure that you actually want to get a certain performance rating, because if you don't want to get a performance rating, then you're not really going to put the effort and do the things that I've been mentioning in this video, and that's totally fine. Like, maybe you have other goals in life, but if you know that you want these things, then you will actually do all the tips that I gave you, and you will go after it and get it. Point is, don't be surprised that you didn't get a performance rating because maybe you just didn't really want it and therefore you didn't do the stuff that you needed to do. Maybe you didn't seek out those opportunities because you just didn't want it. And that's totally fine, but just make sure to know that. So for this tip, I guess I mixed together the idea of you will have to actually seek out opportunities and things to get these kinds of performance ratings, and you should also make sure that you actually want to do those things. Maybe you don't. The final tip isn't really a tip. I just want to mention that at the end of the day, there is a lot of luck involved in all of this. In some sense, I was very lucky when I joined Google. I was on a fantastic team. I had a great manager. I was on a project that was super high grade growth, high velocity, with lots of potential, lots of opportunities that sort of presented themselves to me. I did put a lot of work in, but I had a lot of different factors that were working in my favor. I was in a sort of great environment for performance. And you might not be that lucky. Of course, I would argue that you can always, always try to control your destiny, so to speak. You can try to make your own opportunities, but it's important to remember that luck does play a role here. That's going to be it for this video. I really hope that you found it insightful. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm posting three times a week. I don't know how I'm sustaining doing that, but I have been so far, and I'll see you in the next video.